precious stone from the 12 houses of the Zodiac. See, the Sumerians were the first ones. Let me explain that point really quickly. A lot of people just hear, oh, astrology, it's some type of mystical stuff. Not that I'm really into astrology, but the fundamental aspects of what it means are interesting. The Sumerians basically divided the heavens into 12 parts. And they said, in each one of these sections, will assign a constellation, giving it a reference of some type of animal or uh, you know, like a bird or, uh, you know, many of the constellations, Leo, Aquarius, Sagittarius, are all assigned to some type of entity. So they were the first ones to divide the heavens into 12 parts and in such a way that during the time of helical, helical rising, it's just basically when you stand out and it's just at the time when the sun is setting. So if you're watching in the direction of where the sun is rising, excuse me, where the sun is rising, you can see what constellation the sun is rising against. So you would say, ah, I see that the sun is rising in front of the age of Aquarius, excuse me, in front of the constellation for Aquarius, or the constellation of Leo, or Taurus. And that would let you know, ah, we are in the age of Aquarius. So that's how they came up with this idea of dividing the heavens into 12 parts, and knowing during the helical rising, when the sun is coming up in the morning, what age we are in, based on what constellation they were seeing at that time. It's very interesting. Here's another Sumerian, uh, more of a precious stone, lined with gold, electroplated with gold. And very interestingly enough, it talks about the, uh, it's basically a Sumerian king talking to his son, inscribing information having to do with their gods. And they, they the Sumerians spoke of their gods and gave them a, t a term, which was Anunnaki. And the term Anunnaki simply in English means those who from heaven come to earth. So the Sumerians specifically write about interactions with these beings called the Anunnaki. And here again is just a, uh, a religious stone and you see above them a symbol of the winged disc and a, and a, a crescent moon shaped object. And basically that winged disc is a symbol of these Anunnaki, their living gods. So. The reason why the Sumerian information really starts to take a twist of uh, a twist of interest is they have very accurate astronomical information. They recorded over hundreds of years observations in the sky. There were actually tablets that if who could whoever scho whatever scholar was able to read this information could tell you and this was very sacred information only high priests and certain scribes were given the the ability to write and read this information. Now some of these tablets, for instance, could tell you 50 years in advance when there was going to be a solar eclipse. So someone reading this could tell you, ah yes, in 50 years on this date, the sun will rise on this time and will be eclipsed by the moon, or vice versa. And so they had very accurate astronomical information that they've recorded in stone. So this is, this is a, a, a text, for instance, that we're looking at here, that's from a culture, again, 6,000 years old. Now, you hear the term 6,000 years, you're like, well, what's the difference? 6,000, 4,000, what's the difference? If you realize that it's 2005, we're basically, you know, 2,000 years, let's say, we're basically 2,000 years removed from when the time of Christ was here, AC to B, BC to AD. So 2,000 years ago. Now, if you go back another 2,000 years from that point, you're at the God of the Hebrew God, uh, Abraham. Right? So if you go back another 2,000 years from that point, you're at the Sumerian culture. 4,000 years, 4,000 BC, 6,000 years ago. So it's very interesting that, again, a culture that old is leaving us information that now, with our technology, sending probes into space, ground-based telescopes, can now confirm the ob observa observations made by the Sumerians thousands of years ago. So this brings into a very interesting question. Where did they learn this information? How do they get it? Now, in colleges and institutions today, they just teach people, ah, the Sumerians were the first culture on Earth. They invented mathematics and writing, but they don't tell you specifically the knowledge they had or what they were writing about. And a lot of that had to do with their interaction with their living gods, which we simply, the, the saying has now been titled through the work of Eric von Daniken and Zachary Sitchin and a few others, ancient astronauts. Ancient man wasn't visited by gods, but by beings from another planet, ancient astronauts, just like we will probably do in our future, is venture out into space and find other cultures and impart them with technology, just as it's happened to us. So 
There's many references that we look at for in the English version of the Bible that describe interaction with spiritual beings that were actually material, real, you know, beings that departed knowledge to man. And so the question is, well, where is heaven exactly? It's just every reference that we have in the New King James English Version, the, the word heaven actually just means sky, the heavens. It doesn't mean some mythical place that's in the white fluffy clouds with a big pearly gate opening. No, this is a mistranslation. It's actually just meaning the skies. So a very interesting thing is, is what, do we, what do we really know about uh, angels and stuff like that? And so my quest, again, was in looking at the Sumerian information, they have paralleled many of the biblical tales from the Noah's Ark, the Adam and Eve. Many of these tales are found in a Sumerian version, in stone, unchanged, telling the exact same story as the English version, but it's in stone, thousands of years older. So some of the things that they also show, again, were the interaction with their living gods, the Anunnaki. Just like we see in the Bible, interaction with angels. Look at these stellars. For instance, this one is a depiction in Iraq shown a Sumerian king greeting an Anunnaki coming down on some type of flying craft, having the ability coming from heaven to earth. A physical thing. So these depictions, here's a pullback of, uh, of that same type of a shot, these type of pictures are describing a time when ancient man was seeing things that we today just for whatever reasons aren't seeing but they didn't have the ability the technical understanding that we do so ancient man living in clay huts and using stone tools didn't understand technology and space travel so advanced beings and coming and visiting us and departing us this knowledge are just looked at as gods but not today with our understanding of technology, we start to view things differently. So many of these artifacts that show us ancient man depicting how their gods came to visit, they didn't understand to say, oh, it was a spacecraft. Anything in the, in the sky flying around was a living being, a bird. You know, so they depicted their gods with wings, saying they had the power of flight. This is a, a, a very interesting artifact that shows one of the Sumerian gods her name was Ishtar, or also known as Inanna. And she had the powers to basically roam the skies of Earth. And there are tales that many men found her attractive, but did not want to go with her because they found out that all the men that ended up going with her would sleep with this, this god, Inanna, and then kill her. And then, uh, she, excuse me, she would kill them. So there's actually a Sumerian tale that describes how one of the kings was seduced by her, but said, no, no, <laughs> thank you anyways, but I'd like to continue living. But again, if you look at the, the accuracy of their, and their, you know, their beauty of their ar ar architecture and their archaeology of the artifacts, and it's just amazing that uh, we show these things to scholars today, and they're like, you know, it's amazing that they were able to create such intricate uh, wall reliefs and artifacts that still exist today. So this is a wall relief of a typical Anunnaki that we have seen left throughout the region describing these beings, the ones that from heaven come to earth. And Zachariah Sitchin has done significant research explaining the role of what these beings did here on earth. Some of them were uh, kings and, and, and assisted in you know building projects. Some of them were in charge of spaceports like this one that we see here. This is a gentleman that was in charge of a spaceport. That's when he has the unique headdress looking more like a bird. But very interesting, again, ancient symbology. Ancient man didn't understand what they were seeing, so they depict him with wings. Well, interestingly enough, the first manned mission we had to the moon, we depicted Apollo 11 as Houston, the eagle has landed. Now, 6,000 years from now, I seriously doubt that our, uh, our not ancestors, but the people that will come after us, We'll, we'll not look and see, ah, the symbology they were